So I got back on clonazepam. I was probably off of clonazepam for around six months. At the time, I didn't know how hard it was to get off of it or get... I knew that I had crazy side effects getting off of it. Um, originally, like the first, you know, couple months was just really bad and the light sensitivity and the migraines and things like that and just feeling all around like sick. I didn't throw up or anything like that, but I, I definitely had like loose stools and uh, I definitely felt sick to my stomach all the time, but um, I got off of it and I, I still just felt awful most of the time, so I just wanted to get back on it and for whatever reason I, I did that because I wasn't feeling good regardless, so I got back on it and only this time, um, the doctor I saw got me on um, Ambien as well. So now I was on Ambien. And I was also taking um, Ultram, which is Tramadol. So I got on Tramadol, which did a number to my stomach as well. But um, I was on Ambien for four, four years, four or five years. And I was on... Uh, clonazepam again for another year until I got off of clonazepam for good and I'm not going to get back on clonazepam but I um, basically I had a surgery because um, I had a hiatal hernia uh, something that runs in our family it's in our genes um, so I had a hiatal hernia I had a surgery on my chest I got that fixed I was playing basketball. I, f I went up to do something. I felt a tear. Lost all the wind in my chest. And then two months later, it was getting worse and worse. I ended up in the ER because I, I ate something. It wouldn't pass through my stomach. I felt like I was having a heart attack. It felt so bad. I went in the ER, um, rode in an ambulance, seriously thought I was dying. They gave me lorazepam to calm me down sent me home with lorazepam. They said, you're fine. It's not your heart. We do an EKG. You're good. You're fine. Goodbye. And uh, I had already had the surgery. I knew that something was wrong with the surgery, but I didn't have the same insurance that I had, so I would have to pay out of my pocket to go see that same doctor. And I couldn't afford to do that. So I went and got an endoscopy. Um, the endoscopy results said, inconclusive they said they couldn't see anything so for the next year and a half I every time it got really bad I had to just pop a lorazepam which is an Ativan which is kind of I guess the uh, clonazepam's little brother little sister if you will uh, the lesser the one with the the faster half-life um, and I still get uh, I don't know if you can tell, but I get these crazy, like, uh, Ativan, man, this drug literally stabbing pains all around my, my cranium all the time. And I, for the longest time, I didn't know what was causing it six months after taking it because it's, I originally, the chest thing that was bad. I felt like I was dying, you know, so you take a uh, lorazepam. And I, I take this one as a crutch, only when I needed it, if ever, ever, if I ever needed it, you know, to help me walk. Um, but I would take it and barely, any, if I needed it. But, at, but as I realized, um, I started getting these crazy migraine things, crazy pressure in my head so bad that I couldn't focus, I couldn't, I couldn't even drive to work, you know, so I'd wake up, and I, I couldn't figure out what was doing it, and I talked to my doctor about it, and he said, oh, let's, let's get you on another thing, so now I'm on this anti-seizure thing, Topamax, um, and amitriptyline, which is supposed to help with migraines, all this bullshit, but I'm, you know, I'm looking online, everybody online is saying, oh yeah, Ativan is causing the sinus pressure, so, I'm thinking, I'm just going to get off the Ativan. So I got off of it, and I got off the Ambien as well. I checked into a detox center, and I'm going to continue this in uh, part three. So hang on.